Well, I don't think we're in a depression now as far as the economic conditions. I said that by the time the historians look back on this time period, this could be the beginning of that depression because I think the depression is in our future, really not in our past. And the way we've been kind of holding back the tides of depression is through debt and inflation. And so we've been, you know, kicking the can down the road, but we're really sowing the seeds of the future depression that I believe the time period we're in now will just be lumped in with it, right? Not like it's, you know, it's this is the earlier stages of, of that prolonged period uh, that is really gonna coincide with, um, you know, having to come to terms with all the mistakes that we've made in the past. It's like the chickens coming home to roost uh, because of bad monetary and fiscal policy that go back, you know, for decades, uh, we're in a huge hole and it isn't going to be easy to get out of it. And the time period uh, where we're going to get out of it, that's, you know, it's going to be hard times. And the government is in a position to make those times a lot harder. So, I, you know, that's a wild card as to how the government is going to react to this unfolding crisis and how much worse they might make it be. Now, as far as hyperinflation, yeah, I was talking about a hyperinflation scenario back in you know the early days of the 2008 financial crisis based on the way the government reacted to that with quantitative easing. And I knew that the road that we were going down could lead to hyperinflation. Now, I always said that that was the worst case scenario. I never said, hey, it's, it's for sure. But of course, you know, the media, everybody picks up on my warnings of hyperinflation. Peter Schiff believes that we are not currently in a depression, but he warns the future economic conditions may lead to one. He argues that depression has been temporarily averted through debt and inflation, but emphasizes that these actions have sown the seeds for a future depression. Debt and inflation have indeed been used to stimulate the economy and prevent recessions, as seen in response to the 2008 financial crisis. Continuous debt accumulation can create long-term economic imbalances and instability, potentially leading to a severe economic downturn in the future. Schiff suggests that the government plays a significant role in determining how severe this impending depression will be. He highlights the possibility of worsening the situation with poor monetary and fiscal policies. Government policies, such as excessive spending or failing to address structural economic problems, can exacerbate economic challenges. History has shown that government actions during economic crisis can either mitigate or worsen their severity. Uh, I still think that that you know, hasn't been taken off the table. And the odds of that are actually greater now than they were when I first started warning about it. But I always said that, look, that's the worst case scenario. You destroy your currency completely, where you're talking Weimar Republic, Zimbabwe. But what I did say was inevitable was very high inflation. And we've just started to experience that in recent years. And I don't think that's over. I mean, I think we're going to see higher inflation. Right now, the high watermark for year over year CPI was just over 9%. That's not going to cap this. We're going to go into the double digits. Uh, and the first digit might not be a one. You know, that now Whoa. that still wouldn't be hyperinflation, right? If we have 20% inflation, that's not hyperinflation. If you compare what we have now, I guess everybody wants to say, look, it's not that bad because look how much worse it was in the 70s where we had inflation 10, 11, 12 percent for several years. What people don't understand is that you're comparing apples to oranges because the CPI that was in use in the 70s is not the same CPI that we use today. Schiff has been warning of a hyperinflation scenario for some time. He acknowledges that this is a worst case scenario but argues that the possibility is increased over time. The use of quantitative easing during and after the 2008 financial crisis did increase the money supply and had the potential to lead to hyperinflation. Continual expansion of the money supply, especially during a crisis, can erode the value of a currency and potentially lead to hyperinflation. Schiff distinguishes between high inflation and hyperinflation, asserting that high inflation is more likely in the near future. Recent increases in the Consumer Price Index CPI, indicate higher inflation, and it's not far-fetched to believe that it may continue to rise. A key point is that inflation, even if not hyperinflation, can still have a significant negative impact on people's purchasing power and living standards. Schiff emphasizes that inflation is driven by government actions, particularly the expansion of money supply. He explains that when the government prints money to finance its spending, it devalues existing money and effectively imposes a hidden tax on the public. The creation of money by the government, particularly through quantitative easing, 
is a form of inflation that reduces the value of existing currency. Inflationary policies can reduce the purchasing power of consumers, making it more expensive to buy goods and services. When they print their way out of a short-term problem, they print their way into an even larger long-term problem, which is what they did. Now, quantitative easing is just a euphemism. It's a better sounding name for something that's really bad, which is inflation. So quantitative easing is when the government prints money and buys government bonds. Now that's inflation by definition, by classic definition. Inflation is when you expand the supply of money. How is the money supply expanded? By the purchase of debt. The central bank buys government debt and creates the money to pay for it. That's the mechanism in the United States where the money supply grows. And so that's just inflation. So quantitative easing was inflation. So when Ben Bernanke first launched quantitative easing in 2009 as a way to stimulate the economy, he really said, look, let's create a bunch of inflation to stimulate the economy. Now, he didn't want to say that because if he went out and told the public, our solution to this financial crisis is to create inflation, people would have said, but wait a minute, I don't want inflation. I don't want my cost of living to go up. That doesn't sound like a good solution. Is that all you got? You know, you got something else? So if basically they dress it up and they say, no, 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 what we're doing is quantitative easing. See, that doesn't sound so bad. And so that's how they got the public to swallow more inflation is that they wrapped it up in the, the trappings of, of quantitative easing. But that's all it was. Now, the reason that we didn't get real big increases in the CPI until really after COVID was that there were a lot of forces in the economy at that time that were pushing prices down. And had the government not unleashed all this inflation, we would have seen prices fall. I mean, they never actually fell during any year. But had the government not d done that, I'm pretty sure that prices would have gone down and the cost of living would have would have been lower. Now, a lot of these politicians or Keynesian economists say that's terrible. Oh, that's deflation. That's really a bad deal. We don't want that. That's BS. If prices go down, that is good for the consumer. That provides relief because now the cost of living is lower. You don't need as much money to buy food. You don't need as much money uh, to buy energy. You have more money left over to buy other things. You don't have to go into debt to pay for things. And falling prices is even good for business. As long as their costs are falling in line with their prices, they maintain their margins and now they can sell more. They make it up on volume because when prices are lower, their customers can buy more stuff. So everybody wins from falling prices, but the government doesn't want that. And so uh, it was able to stop that by, by unleashing inflation. Inflation is a tax and people just don't realize it because the government blames it on greedy corporations, on Putin, on OPEC, on, on, on everybody but themselves. But it is a hidden tax and the easiest way to hide it is if you have a productive economy that otherwise would reduce prices. Because if prices were going to go down, let's say by 5%, and they create you know, 5% inflation so that prices remain the same, nobody realizes how much worse off they are because the government stole something they, they never had. The free market was going to deliver that benefit and the government took it. It discusses the ways the government funds its operations, primarily through taxation and, when needed, by printing money, which results in devaluing existing currency. Government spending is typically funded by collecting taxes from the public or, when necessary, by issuing debt bonds that the central bank buys with newly created money. This process can lead to inflation as the increase in money supply without a corresponding increase in production can erode the value of the currency. Schiff argues that falling prices or deflation can actually be beneficial for consumers and businesses as it lowers the cost of living, increases purchasing power, and allows businesses to sell more. Falling prices benefit consumers by making goods and services more affordable, improving their standard of living. Lower costs can also help businesses increase their profits and expand, leading to economic growth. Schiff contends that government agencies have adjusted how inflation is measured over time, leading to the perception that inflation is less severe than it actually is. Over time, changes in the methodology used to calculate inflation may result in underestimating price increases, making inflation appear less severe. Using different methods to measure inflation can lead to discrepancies between official figures and the real impact on consumers. Peter Schiff's view is rooted in his belief that government actions have a significant influence on the economy, including its potential to lead to a depression or hyperinflation.
He underscores the importance of understanding the economic consequences of government policies and the potential long-term impact on the public.